Hi everybody, it's Robbie from Southern California. Today is a really warm day. It was cool last week and today it's about 90. It's onion planting time. When we come into fall, it's a really good time to start planting onions. It worked really good for me and I'm gonna do it again this fall, which is now. Now I have a method that I actually should have done a separate video on, on how I can plant where I can bring things indoors. Look at these containers. They're BPA free. They cost $2 a piece and they are fantastic to grow in. You have seen all around my deck, those upside down planters. You know, they sell for over a hundred dollars and I don't even think they hold as much as these do. You could put this together and you can make your own and it would cost you $2. But the way I'm gonna do it, it's gonna cost me four. I went ahead and got an aqua or blue one and a black one, I like black, and that was the colors they had. And this one, as you can see, I put a lot of holes in for well drainage. Now how do I say this is for indoors? Well, I'm gonna fix this one up for one onion and then I'm gonna fix up the other one for a different type of onion. But going on to these containers, this is really good drainage. You can sit this outside on a table, a chair, a balcony. You can sit it anywhere you want on the ground. But if the weather got really bad, let's say you had a snowstorm come in and you don't want to lose your plants that you grew in here or you're growing in here, you have an extra one. You make sure it's drained already. You put it together. This one has no holes. So when you bring it in, you can sit this anywhere. You can sit it on the floor, unless you've got dogs, and then your dogs might get in it. You can sit it on a table. You can sit it anywhere you want. You can sit it if you've got a service porch, a mud room, whatever, but it's not gonna get anything wet. See, this has got no holes in it. So your plants, your seedlings, whatever you're growing will be in the top one, which has got holes, but your bottom one has no holes, so you can put it anywhere in the house in the meantime. Now. The only suggestion is that I would give, I couldn't find any. If you ever found any that didn't have a lip, see the lip, that might be better because this way nothing would hide in it. Like let's say a, a, some, a spider, a little bug or something, but all of them that I saw had lips, so that was fine with me. You could always just check it, you know, if you kept it outside. But this way, you could move this into a greenhouse. You can move it anywhere you want. That's not the subject today. I just figured I'd talk about it. Today, it's on planting onions, and I am going to use this method. And I'm going to use this method, which is the same way. Let me move everything over. I have two of these. One's got holes. One does not. So I can move this anywhere I want. So if I was putting it somewhere that was wood, and I didn't want to get the wood wet, let's say on a balcony rail or a table, I won't have to worry about it. Once this is drained and even not drained, it doesn't matter. You slip it in together after you water it, you can move it anywhere you want. Otherwise, when I bring it outside, I'm just going to have it like that. It can be sitting wherever I want. So what I'm doing today is I'm going to plant onions. And I'm planting two different types. I got the onions that are, this was $1.98. Got this from Lowell's Home Depot. No, Home Depot. Um, I'm not sure. It was Lowe's or Home Depot. But the problem is, last year for $1.98, you got 60. This year, you get 30. And these are the sets. So they're just dried little bulbs, and you go from there. So last year, I planted them in my upside down planter that was up in here, and people said, oh, you're overcrowding them. I had onions all year. I loved it. It doesn't matter if you overcrowd them. You pull the onion that you want that, you know, in between. So it doesn't matter if it's small. You know how much baby onions cost in the store? So it doesn't matter. Plant it whatever way you want. It worked for me, and that's the way I'm going to plant it. Now this, I went to the nursery the other day, and they had them where there's starts. And these are yellow onions, and they've already started to grow. So I'm going to experiment. I'm going to set up two. One I'm going to use, the ones that are already growing. And remember, you can use the greens, too. And then the other one, I'm going to set up the sets. And I want to see if there's a difference. Because we bought three packages last year. And we didn't end up with as many onions as we thought we were going to end up with. 
which makes me wonder if a lot of them didn't grow when you get them like this. If they were too dry, then they may not grow and we may not have noticed. The ones that I planted in my upside down planter, which was around this size, and I packed a whole bunch in there, I had onions all year, so most of mine grew. Gary grew a lot in the garden. He thinks a lot of them didn't grow. So we're gonna try it both ways. But I'm gonna set this up. Let me move this here right now. And what I'm gonna do, very simple, and again, everybody does it their own way. I'm gonna start with some shredded paper that I have in the house. We're gonna set them both up the same exact way. Then I have also got just some leaves and stuff from my deck. I'm gonna throw that in there. Remember, remember, onions don't have a super big root system, so it won't really matter. In fact, I'll set them up at the same time. I'll use the rest of the paper in here. And I've got some more leaves. This is just from the garden. It's the same, basically the same thing. It's dried up squash leaves, zucchini leaves, and some dried up purple kale leaves. And, uh, and celery, which I want to make sure the celery stays on the bottom, as close to the bottom as possible. Not that there's anything wrong with it, but celery loves to grow. And I'll end up with a ton of celery growing. So I'm going to make sure that's on the bottom. And then this, let me show you this on the table here so I can explain what it is. This is mixed up some leaves, but it's also um, kitchen scraps that are actually left in a bucket out here. I just had it in one of these floral tubs. I didn't know where to put it, so it dried out. It smelled so good when I picked it up this morning, and it was the orange leaves and not orange leaves. It was the um, the orange skin and everything had dried up. And when I crushed it, it smelled really good. But this is going to go in there too, and this will add nutrients to both of these containers I'm going to plant. So I'm just going to add this. I really need to get a better setup so I can stand up. But let's just do it this way. I probably will go into the garden or even here on the deck and find some worms to add in. I like a big tub that you mix things in. Now I'm going to add, I'm going to top the rest with potting soil. And if you've got your own compost from your garden, you can do that too. I got potting soil that I bought a bunch of that went out of business. And so I'm going to use potting soil on the top. I to make sure all this is pressed down because I want to make sure when I plant my onions that the onions are going to be in the potting soil. This will break down. As I start to water all this, soak it up really good. I won't be putting it in those containers yet. I want to just get it watered really good. I will get some earthworms. I've got earthworms in all my plants here. And I'll just get a little, I only need a couple, like a handful, just throw it in there. And they'll start to break it down. The microbes will come and break it down. I did not bring myself. Here, I'll use this. And now I'm just going to add potting soil. It's that simple. Last year, growing onions. This is not walking onions. These are full yellow, white, or red onions, or purple onions, whatever you want to call it. That was the greatest thing to grow. I was always running out, running to the store to buy an onion, and I'm not really overly thrilled with the onions from the stores these days. Um, I've talked about this many times. Everything is being irradiated. It's a process that they really started getting more and more into. They've been doing it for years, but they started doing it more and more. And that's because it, it's basically shelf life in the store. But sometimes I get home and I buy onions and I cut them in half and they're starting to go bad from the inside out because that's where it started to break down. So I want to have fresh food. You can't grow everything. Nobody can grow everything. Well, maybe some people can. I cannot grow everything. It would be nice if I could, but I don't expect to. I, I expect to keep farmers in business and I want to still buy. 
but there are certain things that are just too easy to grow. And I found out last year that beautiful onions are just too easy to grow. You know what? I'm going to cut this. Onions were just so easy, and I did overcrowd them, and I will overcrowd them. Because sometimes you're making something and you only need a little bit of onion. You go out there and you pick the small onion. And I found out that as I was picking them, the onions, the other ones, started to grow more and more. Now, any plant that gets overcrowded, most plants, let's, I don't like saying any because there's always an exception. When they're overcrowded, they'll stay small. They almost like, like lettuce. If you scatter a bunch of lettuce seeds, they'll stay real small and they're like baby lettuce. And what it is, is they're all in big competition for the food and the nutrients there and they're just all fighting for it so they're staying small. They sell a lot of baby lettuce that way by, you know, and baby plants that way. But when you pull them and you start to thin them, then the ones that are left take over and they start growing more and more. So look at that. I see you don't need that much. By filling it up on the bottom with stuff from your garden, you don't need to, you know, use a whole bag of honey soil. This was really very little left in there. So we'll get this one going and then I'll dump the rest in the other one. And we'll get the onions growing. I am going to plant far more. I only planted one container last year, which is way down there. And I think they're all gone. There might be one left, I'm not sure, but it was just the nicest thing. And when you grow fresh onions, they're, they taste so much better. In my opinion, they taste better. And one onion seems to go a long way compared to the ones you buy that a little that really don't have taste. It's kind of like buying tomatoes and people say, oh, the tomatoes from the grocery store don't taste good. Well, they pick them when they're not ripe. They force them into ripening. Get the other one up here. And they don't taste like you raised them off a farm. I mean, you know, your farm. It's completely different. And the onions I found out were the same thing. See, that's it. It was such a small amount you need. This is going to be really cool. And then, like I was saying, it doesn't matter where you are in the United States. It doesn't matter. Or anywhere. If the weather gets bad, you grab that container, you drop the container with the onions that are planted in there, and you bring it in the house, and you put it where you want. You have a sunny room, put it in a sunny room, wherever you want. Okay, so I think with this one, the round one, I'm going to grow the sets in here. So let's see what they look like first before I start. Let's see what sets look like. I had, I had good luck with them last year. So it was nice to have, but I'm just curious. So they say they're 30 in here. Let's see what's in here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Well, that one's dead. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, hmm, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. This one is mushy and rotten. That goes into a compost bin. This is iffy. I'll plant it, but that's iffy. That one looks like it's pretty gone too. So 30, they were not kidding. You're going to get 30 or less. That doesn't make me super happy. But you know, it was $2. So now, let's just push them in and get these going, root side down. You can barely see the root side. We're just going to push them in, and then we'll cover them up. And like I said, I'm not going to worry about if they're overcrowded or not. They did really good. All I want to worry about is make sure the lumps are all out. Okay, so we're just going to push these all in. Then I'm going to water them, and I'm going to see how they do. Now, what you're going to do if you do it this way, and if you're going to do it like me, and you're going to overcrowd them. Boy, that's... I'll turn it sideways. I'm <laughs> sure on that one. These are so tiny, and they're very... I'm not real happy with them. They're very dry. And these are supposed to be fresh from this year. Shame on them. They, don't, they look like they're from last year. But we'll see what happens. Okay. 
anyways, root side down, we're just going to plant them all over. What you're going to do if you do it like this is you're going to make sure you're going to give your onions space. So when you go and you need a small onion, you're making a stir fry, you're making a sandwich, you want some onion in it, you can have some tuna with onion. I love tuna and onion. Or you need to make something with an onion. You're just going to start to pull where you're going to end up with onions that have more space. Remember, baby onions cost a fortune. And you'll, you'll see, I mean, it works so good for me. The onions just kept growing and growing and growing. And I had more onions than I knew what to do with. Now, I shouldn't say that. I can always use onions, but I had a lot of onions. I was really happy with that. Okay, we're going to get all our 30 in. It doesn't really matter where. I'm just trying to see. Some of them are so dry. They're just hard to tell which way is which. Okay. So now, look at that. We've got all 30 planted. I'm going to cover them up, and I'm going to water them when I'm all done. Okay, that's no good. Here's another one. Why are they small and dry? We'll see what happens. Get all these, and if I have to, I can always put a little more potting soil on top. But these are, hmm. Well, I did it last year. All right, so we're done with that one. Now, here's this. This is going to be fun. These were $5. $4. Actually, they were $4 and change. And when I got them at the nursery, the manager there that works there said to me that they're overgrown. So I said to him, well, they should come apart okay. And he said, yeah. So he gave me 10% off. I didn't even ask. Usually I ask. I didn't even ask. I thanked him. So let's see how many I get. We're going to get them all apart. And I'll probably put the potting soil back in for $5. But these are alive. Look at the difference. The other ones, I had a rotten one. They're already starting to rot. Look at the difference. It's really nice if you have a balcony or a deck or a garden have a work table. This has turned out to be really nice. It's glass. I think I picked the whole setup for $35 somewhere. And then you can just hose it off. We're going to get these out. And let's see how many we have in here. But what I like about these is they are alive. Let's get them apart first and then we'll count them. And you could practically start to use these as soon as you want. I mean, you could go to the store and buy baby onions. And they're this size. And the baby onions always cost more than a full-size onion. Go figure. Okay. There's two there. There. These are beautiful. Smell so good. Look at that. But I have never bought them this way before. Uh oh. They smell so strong. <laughs> they really do smell strong. Which is really cool. Okay. And these, if they're in good shape, keep them. You can use them when you're planting. All right. So we've got a tag that says these are yellow onions. And there's one that just started, a seedling. Now you can grow them from seed too, but this way you've got a really good head start. You've got something that you can actually start to eat if you need it to right away. I mean, if I was making something really simple and I needed an onion, look at that. But they're gonna keep growing and growing and growing as I water them, and then I can pick the size that I want. And there are a bunch of teeny ones in there. Look at that. They may, may be teeny, but at least they're not dead. The other one I threw away, I touched it when I squeezed it, and it just, it was mush, it was rotten. So let's see what I got for $5. $4.50, he gave me 10% off. I'd like to save as much of the roots on the onion as possible, but don't worry about it, they grow back. You know, I've grown onions, I've got one onion in my garden right now that I bought from the store it started to grow so it wasn't fully irradiated i planted it and i've got a big seed head on top which i should go collect the seeds and get those going so they're very forgiving let's put it that way and they really did a good job on growing even being so overcrowded like that Look how tiny. one more so if you're looking to buy onions check your nursery because they're getting them in now in the fall but from what I understand, you can grow onions all year. Some people say they grow them all year. 
I mean, mine grow all year. I was using them since last year. You just said I'm out now, so now, look how tiny. But it doesn't matter, it's gonna grow. Oh, I may not be able to put all of these in the square container, so some might be going in my garden, or I'll set up another container, or I'll give the rest to Gary and he can stick them in his garden. But I'll get as much as I can in here. But if you want to plant and get things growing in the house, I don't, I've never lived back east. You know, so let's say New York or Philadelphia or yeah, anywhere back there. I don't know anything about it. So if you've got winters where you don't have any good weather, then I don't know what to say. But if you've got days that are nice and you can go outside in the area you live, then you most certainly could plant like this and when you have nice weather, then you go ahead and you put it outside and then on bad weather you take it in. You know what? I forgot to count it. Let's count it. So we've got one, two, three, four, I might move them over here, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, oh yeah, <laughs> 21, 22, 23, I don't think I'll be able to put them all in here, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, Wow, 48, 49, 50, 51. You know, that was a really good deal. 51 live plants that look fantastic. I cannot complain on that. I love this. Now, if they were really small with onions, you can actually just lie them down, dig a trench, and lay them down like this and just cover the tip. But being that these mainly have bulbs already, I'm going to do it differently. I'm literally going to plant them. I will plant them close, but I don't think I'm going to be able to put all these in one container. So I'll probably run a second container. But there's no reason why anybody I don't see cannot grow onions, put them out on a deck, put them out on a patio, put them in your garden, put them, put them anywhere you've got. And if the weather starts to get really bad and you have snow and freeze coming, bring them in and you've got the bottom. You've got the bottom it drops in, and this will keep your carpet clean, your, anything clean, because it's going to be sitting in here, and you just water it lightly when you have to. You don't have to drench onions completely, you know, full of water. But, boy, this is nice, because I can see how I want to plant them. Yes, I know. I hear. I already hear the screaming through, the, through YouTube. No, you're supposed to plant them a foot apart. I know, I know. I didn't do it last year that way, and it worked beautiful for me. They pushed each other over a little, but it didn't matter, because I would go in between, pull out the onion I wanted, and it would do fantastic. I loved it. I am going to overcrowd them, but I'm going to be using them right away, because I cook with onions all the time. The only reason I still had onions left is I skimped on them. It was like... Do I really need to pick an onion? I only have a couple left. Oh no, I'm going to have onions everywhere. So we eat a lot of onions. Now sometimes I, I make a lot of food here that I don't put onions in, like our eggs in the morning, and the onions are so good for us. But if I'm sharing it with the dogs, I shake my head. When I'm sharing it with the dogs, I don't add any onions because onions are not for dogs. So don't give your dogs onions. As I say that and find Kitty in the garden and she will come out on the deck and I had to raise my walking onions because she likes to chew on onions. So I have had to raise them because I don't want her chewing on onions at all. She also likes garlic chives. I don't know. I take those away from her and try to stop her on that too. I don't want her eating all that. See, with dogs, 
which is really interesting. Dogs have a metabolism that is very forgiving. I'm going to say very forgiving to their mistakes. So if they eat something that is not good for them, it doesn't necessarily oops, kill them right away. It would be something they would have to eat over and over and over. So that's why certain things they say that are bad for dogs, and you're saying, well, my dog's eating it. Well, it will affect them later. It's kind of like eating dry dog food every day that's been irradiated and they have no vitamins. Eventually, it catches up to them. I did a video on that, which me and my vet found out now. But any, going back to this, try to keep onions away from your pets. They don't need it. It isn't something they need in their diet. Absolutely not. And... For you, onions is, is a prebiotic. And my umbrella is falling over. Hold on. <laughs> it got windy. Um, onions is a prebiotic for us. And it's very important for us to have onions. So onions is very, very good in our diet. And I, I feel that there's no reason why we can't grow them. So if I didn't go back, and I may go back and get another tray, this is fantastic. Because this is just too easy. I have $4 worth of containers, some junk from my garden, you know, dry leaves and, and sh paper from, shredded paper from old bills that come, or not bills, advertisements. And then the top with potting soil, and I'm going to have onions. Oh, wow. I probably will go back and plant more. It's just too cheap. And like I said, if you plant them in this method, you can move them. You can leave them outside. If you got a greenhouse, you can move it in a greenhouse. You can move it anywhere you want. It's easy to move because you're not bringing in a flower pot that's oops, dripping water or anything. You're bringing in a container that's nice and dry. I'm going to get all baby, baby ones in here. Otherwise, I might forget about the babies later. Now, with onions, the other thing, too, is if I overplanted them and I wanted to spread them out, I could pull them out later and put them in a different container, too. Okay, so we got all that. Yeah, I cannot, I'm not going to be able to put all these in here. So I probably will run a second or third container. Very good possibility. I'm going to go back and see if they've got more at the nursery. Because with onions, they tend to get them in, and then they don't get them again. I went back to, Gary went back to get more onions last year, and they were out, and they never got them back in. Yeah, so I just would feel bad if I went back, and they were totally gone, and I really wanted more. I might get some more, but that's it. I think there's about 10 I could not plant in here. No big deal. I'm going to get another container going. There's four... Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. But I'm going to put another small one somewhere. Like I said, I can always move them later. That's it. Now they should pick themselves up. In a couple days, start to look good. Don't worry about it looking droopy. Just got moved. That's, that's all there is to it. Now I'm just going to water them. I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of what they came out of in here on the top. And that's all there is to it. I had a watering can. Oh, there it is. I'll water them both in real good. And like I said, what's really, really nice is if I needed to move it in or move it anywhere else, they're going to go back in this other container and it will not leak. So... You'll see this on maybe the garden tour or something. This is going to be fantastic. I'm going to have all the onions I want this year. I hope I've given you some ideas on this. This is, this is amazing. I think these are better to get these as regular good growing onions instead of the sets. But that's up to you, whatever you want. I mean, I grew the sets last year and they did well. This is fantastic. Oh, wow. I'm going to have so many onions. I'm so excited. Like I said, everybody should grow onions. I grow walking onions and then regular onions. Wow. They smell so good. 
So with that, I hope we gave you some ideas on containers to grow in as well as growing onions. Have a great day and don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye. Wow, this is so cool.